Ta-da! I'm back, and I have a person with me. So I have the Brad Chester Show with Ryan Horton and the entire crew is Sock Puppets. And because of that, we instead went from our normal format to a little more cozy by the fire. Mainly because I like this scene better than I like the rest of the scenes. So uh, that's what we're doing. We've got stuff to talk about, though. Absolutely. So many teams tournaments going on this last weekend, along with all the single stuff that went on. A uh, couple of surprisingly winning some GTs, including a you know larger 50 man GT. So it was a it was a good weekend for 40K. You know, I'm going to go with I want to start with an off one because Grey Knights won a tournament. So I want to talk about that a little bit. But I played Grey Knights twice and I played them on opened boards because I chose it because I'm an idiot. Because uh, I was trying to pick some, again, trying to help the teams do stuff. But that list is, like, wildly hard to beat. I mean, it, I think, especially in a team situation, it feels like just... A, a, Which version of the list are you talking about? Uh, just shit tons of Dread Knights. Dread Knights and Strikes. Uh, one of the lists actually had a unit of Paladins with the Flamers, which, when I was playing Elves, was uh, real annoying. <laughs> oh, yeah? At one point in time... Uh, he deep struck back with, I killed a couple of the paladins, but of, weirdly enough, all the flamers, you know, managed to make it out alive. Just how the sergeants never die. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he literally plops down directly in the back of my backfield and pretty much everyone had to go, well, I guess I'll just stay here. Cause I didn't want him to, you know, use the strat to bounce if I moved within nine and also, I didn't want to be overwatched. And he had two CP, so I was going to get a little bit of portion A and a little bit of portion B. So everybody just went, are you sure, Captain, that it's a good idea for us to stand right next to these guys? I'm like, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> this neighborhood sucks. So it's uh, I, I was just wondering about I'm like, where where do they stand in the meta? Clearly, they've been doing all right. They've had a 50% win chance weekend win rate, but they've actually been doing pretty well in the last 12 weeks. Oh, uh, yeah. They, that that list or a variant of that list is frightening, um, especially in a certain matchups. The the Dread Knights are, a, you know, they're a tough nut to crack to start with. they got a decent toughness, decent amount of wounds, four up in-ball save. Uh, that enhancement that lets them bounce is uh, super fun. Sigil, yeah. Yeah, the sigil. Sigil's nuts, but the, the CP, they've got good strats, and they've got the yeah. they've got the really powerful. I mean, all the shit that you know, the base mechanics that Hypercrypt has, uh, they have. They just have less of the ability to damage and stuff like that. But they had a little bit of upgrades uh, when we had the data slate of the Dread Knights just getting a little bit better at everything they did. Uh, so it was just one of those arm those armies where four up life is four up life. You know, sometimes you can just go, I'm invulnerable, deal with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's a big deal on that. So I was just kind of, I was thinking to myself, where does that army go? Cause when you look at even the stats for the weekend, uh, they had six of their 29 players go uh, either X and O and X and one. They won a tournament. And I was just like, and that's not even counting all the, oh yeah, obviously the team games. You know what I mean? When you can get them some better matchups and stuff like that. So I was kind of thinking to myself, where are where do grenades fall right now? And I'm curious about that because I actually don't know the answer to that. They feel like a good so, army, but where are they power level ish of of armies so right now? I, th I think they're one of the top five armies um, because of the enhancements that they got <clears throat> to the dread knights um, that really bumped them up. They were on the cusp of being a really good army because their mechanic is fantastic, right? The the jump up jump down, move yep. around. Mechanic is amazing. And you combine that with Sigil and the strat to move. Movement shenanigans are a good key in this game, as we've known for quite a while. And I think they're a top five army. Uh, are they, do they have all the answers? No. But do they have a lot of them? Absolutely. Yeah. Zoobs, you're not wrong on that. He goes, Grey Knights fall in that churning middle ground in three weeks would be another hot army. We asked this army a tier. 
it, you're not wrong 100 percent, brother and the thing is is like i said i just don't know where they are right now you know what i mean because like they're not just overwhelming people they don't they're not even remotely a problem but they also feel like they can win against most anything so it's one of those is the meta just good which i think it kind of is but also they have a lot of play and i'm looking at it through a lot of most of my a lot of my events coming up are team events so it's a big deal on that to just look at you know a lot of these armies per obviously perform a lot better when they can get the matches they want to get or at least it's not even get the matches you want to get it's they stay away from the matches they don't want is more of anything because a lot of armies are really good but they have a boogeyman they have the scissors paper rock problem where i win against a lot of the things or at least i have a game into most anything except for this or except for this and in teams you can step around that so i do get a, a little bit of a warped idea of what the meta looks like sometimes when i'm getting ready for a lot of team events because i think of all these armies under the lens of it just won't play against it's one bad thing i mean i i think green knights even in singles are are really strong and yeah, they're going to have a matchup here and there that is just problematic for them. But the horde mechanic that's a problem matchup for a lot of those more elite armies, they have the answer to it with 2D6 flamers, right? And if they're running the 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 Manny Chima style version of it, where there's two redeemers and three tech marines, that's even more flamers that just deal with that horde style of things. Uh, you really have to, when you're playing against that list, play your secondaries, play the mission, and, you know, have acceptable losses versus it. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's tough on that. Again, you know, it's hard to plan against some of those four-up armies. We had the same thing with Custos was out there, you know what I mean? It's just, four-up invul in life is sometimes weird, because you have to plan accordingly. So you have to overcommit to all these. So it puts you, sometimes puts you in weird situations. And to be fair having flamers and lots of them is just nice because we're going into where i think you're going to see a lot of hordes and it takes care of that it also really is excellent against msu armies you know what i mean it was funny because i was i was yapping with conan we were walking around at the team event and we were talking about play and he was playing black templars and he had double land raider redeemer and I can't remember who I was saying. They were like, oh, you'll be really good against that. I go, it'll be Bright Lances versus Land Raiders. And they're like, what are you talking about? You have so many Fire Dragons in the list I took. Yes, I took all the wacky shit. And I'm like, those that's not even a real thing to the Redeemer. When you get within 12 inches, they just set you on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, wh what does the profile do? It'd be really good if I wasn't in flames. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> I wasn't burning alive. Yeah. I mean, like now I'm getting ready to judge uh the battle for salvations uh teams event, their eight man team event coming up here in two weekends. Uh shout out to Ed and his crew for letting me help them out with that this year. It's gonna be an absolutely fantastic event. Um, Ed runs a good event. We've been there before. I've been there for multiple things. Oh, yeah, and one of the one of the night one of the things is is like just sitting there, you know getting some of the fielding some of the questions of hey is this okay for teams versus this you know and it's it's the difference is the mechanics of that is, is quite interesting especially when you start looking at tables and terrain and everything else so i, I mean know, there's a lot of lyle they can set you on fire once brad once i mean they only need to set me on fire once because i'm dead so <laughs> I, I raise your redeemer with two ball predators i mean it basically slap a fucking big flamer with good ap on any vehicle and it kind of sucks when you're playing msu and or horde you're like oh cool i would like to be set on fire no i do not <laughs> you can't shoot your fire drinkers you paint the camouflage rather than the orange <laughs> <laughs> sneaky uh well let's go to the actual like we'll go to the, the meta. i wanted i wanted to grab the grenades because i was thinking about them over the weekend played them twice and i also saw how they did i read this this morning about the uh looking at the meta monday report and it was a big deal on that uh just to figure out where they were now somebody that just decided to go bonkersville over the weekend both with 70 or more games played sisters and thousand sons 59 percent win ratio and both of them had a turn win I mean, sisters are just churning in. Apparently, they were they heard that I kept saying that they're 
super consistent with their 52 to 53 percent win ratio and we're like hold my chalice and go in again <laughs> one way and more again, again as we as, as we keep saying the faction specialist on those help boost those numbers up even more but as more and more people see them played and understand the play style of them the players who play them casually are definitely getting better with it it's Really good. I mean, they had what five XO X ones, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they had five X. Both of them do. Bo- both both yeah. thousand sons and sisters of battle had five uh, X's and O's or X's and ones. Yep. I just it, the sisters is more consistent for me. I think that you're going to see thousand sun have big weekends, but have low weekends also because that army is man, it's so powerful. But as soon as you make a mistake, the wheels can just fly off. Yeah, I mean, even one of the best players in the world. You know, they make one movement error and they lose one of those key pieces and you lose, you know, three or four cabal points. That, that's a hurting. The back are the same as playing Dead by Daylight. I enjoy this. I should have like a, a killer walk in the background every once in a while. You know what? I'll have that put in. I'll just have some <laughs> creature in the in the night occasionally walk by <laughs> while the vampire is going just to make things extra creepy. And if you want to talk about who's still there, Eldari, 56% win rate and a turdy win. Uh, they're going to be, they're good and they're fine. You know what I mean? All- they're good, they're fine. They're they're one of the armies that has a lot of answers to things. And if you don't have answers and the ability to maneuver with them, you can run into problems. Yeah. And as movement kills in this game. It doesn't just, it kills on the scoreboard. It doesn't always kill in the killing powers, but it kills on the scoreboard. In Black Templars, I still think that's the army that, you know, I'm going to go with my Cal Ripken Jr. reference that no one, half the people won't get, more than half. But th- those guys just do well. Just yep. every single weekend. I, I don't... Like, I gotta get... Go ahead. I, I got to give some credit to the stat checks, guys, because they were talking about Black Templar and how they were like, yeah, when you see Black Templar in a top 100 ITC player's hands, it's scary. It's a scary, high damage output army, lots of potential low mistake capabilities. And they're, when they hit in that percentage, it's almost a 70% win rate. I'm sorry, I have to go to the wall for Zooms. Current meta is just opera screaming. You get to win with your favorite faction, and you get to win with your favorite faction. Wait a minute. Who let that Death Watch player in here? You get to win with your favorite faction. <laughs> <laughs> hey, sorry, Oprah. <laughs> Whatever. Oprah, opera. It doesn't really matter. People that yell out things. Everyone gets a win. Yeah. Uh, and the thing is, is that uh, there's a couple of these factions that are just gonna be I, I love the I'm finally happy with Eldar <laughs> in in as far as where they are. Because I think it's an army that's really good, but isn't OP, and it should have been this way since the beginning. Uh, but they had their like we're the most powerful force in the universe freaking for a long time so unfortunately the ahead. one faction that people have been saying is dead and roasting on a fire uh imperial knights won two events or won one event one, and had two x and o's uh, x and o's, x and o's. Yep. and the thing is is imperial knights right now i was talking about this a lot now keep and we were arguing about it I think Imperial Knights would be fine if they just rolled back. I mean, they'd be where they should be if they just rolled back the bonds and stuff and the points. Yeah, I mean, well, if you look at the the list that won Bedlam in the Berg that Don had in Pittsburgh, um, it was Canis Rex, you know, what was it? Uh, four units of two Armingers and then six Arminger Warglaves and a Calidus Assassin. So it's really a similar to the Chaos Knight list. Just not quite as much variant on the little guys. Yep. And the thing is, is that it, it, it has play. You know what I mean? But it will be in anything that, that puts very few models on the table. Be Anytime you make play in a lead army, you will have some skew because you're going to have ups and downs. You know what I mean? That's a, you know, obviously they rotate, they go four, but that's a five up invuln army. You know what I mean? Uh, with high toughness, of course. You're just going to have some gaze where... A shit ton of little guys die. You know what I mean? So you're going to have bad games here and there. But I think that army's scary. Playing Knights is always scary, to be honest with you, just because of that. You can have a bad turn, and all of a sudden there's 
big knights just soccer tossing your shit all over the place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when Canis Rex walks up and pin hands you, uh, it's not fun. Yeah, I mean, it's a big deal. And, and just the little guys all over the place, it's just big as... I mean, T10 is just still T10, you know what I mean? And they have... Uh, they can punch you to death as well as just shoot you. I mean, I don't really like being shot by Melta and then having somebody hit me with a damage a billion hit. So, uh, it's big. Uh, I want to throw out Demons did well over the weekend, and our boy Kyle Trea, as he said, I was playing out of my mind, quote Kyle Trea <laughs> all weekend. So, uh, Demons won 53% win rate, tournament, and two players going X and O and X and 1. Including Kyle. In all honesty, you know, looking at the overall win rates, there's very few things that are super struggling right now. Now, if you look at the low lows, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm still surprised that CSM is as low as it is right now because I still they feel it has tools. A lot of point stuff. hits. They, they took a lot of point hits. The strats were, the strats they hit were a little strong handed. The, I don't think anyone's found the list that works with that new build yet, or there's just better stuff out there. And a lot of the players who casually play chaos space Marines are jumping into something else. I agree on that. And the thing is, is that I think that they also know that there's a new book coming up. It's kind of like how I felt about rock and orcs right now. I'm super unbelievably excited for the orc book, but in the last couple of weeks, I was just kind of like, before before we got the orc releases i was just like i don't want to make new orc lists that i know are going to be invalidated as soon as the book came out you know what i mean and i think that a lot of the csm people are doing the same also right now before they get their book csm has a lot of good builds still in my opinion but almost all of the builds you can make with csm you can probably do it slightly better somewhere else and if you're looking to make an impact in the tournaments you're probably just taking whatever you you know you make a list and you're like well this is like watered down templars or it's you know it's slightly worse this you're just going to take the thing that's slightly better you know what i mean to give yourself yeah. the best chance tyranids tyranids or monsters are just too expensive i think if the if the monsters were in line with the price of what tanks are right now i think we'd be seeing a, a large increase from them um and i also think that uh, unending swarm is just backbreaking to play at a GT. <laughs> it is, it, the thing is, is like it, it, the thing why I still think that Tyranids are underrated is Tyranids still keep doing well at the at the team tournaments. You know what I mean? Yep. You can put them out there. They just need to stay away from a couple matches, especially if they're choosing boards. Monarch did super well over the weekend. Yeah, did uh, he play Invasion Fleet? He played Invasion Fleet. He played yeah. Invasion Fleet, but he also. Uh, played his defender and got to choose, you know, the board that he wanted. He was choosing really light boards all weekend uh, and just shooting people down and just pushing some stuff up, effectively, you know, holding people back and letting himself shoot for a couple turns and then engaging with, you know, all the Maliceptors and stuff like that. Uh, and he was just doing really well, just picking people up. So it, it's one of those, obviously, if I play the right things on the right board, can I do well? Yeah. Well, that's, I, again, looking through the team lens, you know what I mean? So it's harder for, sometimes it's harder for me to go, well, this army should just do better. You know what I mean? And you're like, yeah, it will do better if you get to choose where it is. Yeah. And I think, I think ad mech is just exactly where it's going to be for a while. It's going to be one of the bottom tier armies in the game. They need points adjustments combined with another detachment. Um, I think those are the things they need. And the other low performer from the weekend of Astra Militarum, I think they're fine. I think it's an anomaly week for them. I agree on that. Also, uh, where, good. Where I think they just, it, there are weeks they're going to do remarkably well. I think it depends on terrain, where the tournaments are, and things along those lines. Ooh, I'm going to give a shout out to Sam Dayton for rocking and rolling with his Space Wolves all weekend. He had one loss, probably an anomaly. Uh, I don't know. The guy probably high rolled him. He had no chance. Uh, <laughs> Lyle's he was against you. No, he lost against Lyle, who's wanting to me to say that he played well because he he was the highest scorer over the weekend for the tournaments <laughs> with, with his Blood Angels. Uh, it was funny watching people uh, play when well, they play into Lyle because I you don't see it enough. But that Death Company, we talked about it a week or two ago. That Death Company BA list is no joke. You know what I mean? 
Uh, it's it's got its bad matches, but man, when it hits things that it's other melee armies or things that it's good at, I mean that might be might be the most devastating army in the game if you have four CP. You know, fight on death with an interrupt. All of a sudden, just you know, two combats just explode. Who? They do some real damage. KR's got a good point on this. He goes, yep, teams and singles are just so different when looking at how, you know, quotations good an army is. Just seem like two different games in a way. It is. It, Absolutely. It, sometimes it, it's, it, that's, I kind of like that because it makes more armies viable uh, because you just keep them away from their their bad thing. And that, that is why I'm a team. I go psycho about teams all the time because I actually think you get more pure lists because if a list is really, really good, like we'll go with Lyle's list. He just made a, a smash list and we just go, hey, what are your what are the armies that you can't play? It's not like they wouldn't be hard matches, but like what are your no's? You know what I mean? And he doesn't play those. And he was just monster smashing uh the ones that he could. Uh because that army puts out so much damage, for instance. You know what I mean? How how good is it in singles? I don't know. You know what I mean? Because you will occasionally play on a, a board that you're not good at against an army that you're not good at. So so it's a big deal. And I mean, especially when you look at like the event you went to had uh, like four or five different table layouts for each. Yeah, yeah they, had, they had five wildly different plate layouts. They had okay, two five different. Yeah, players. they had they had two open boards and one was like Bonkersville open, um, and then they played uh, GW four and ninth edition GW two. As, as, okay. So we had some some real differences uh, in it but you could get punished pretty bad on the, some of those boards so like you know it would guard defending you know any of the shooty armies your fotans your guards your whatever's yeah if they you put in a, a melee army against them on one of those open boards if they have to defend who like welcome to getting tabledville population you so it was rough yeah i mean we had you also had, let's see, we had Dayton teams, we had Florida teams, we had Canhammer teams this weekend. There were teams events all over the place, and I agree that they are a different build, because there are armies that I would love to run in teams that I would never take to a singles event. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is that you have to, in in singles, you do have to water your armies down a little bit, or, or you just have to just roll the dice. Um, because if I'm going into singles event, I have to be more versatile than if I'm going into a, in a like the list I took, the other list I took, I would never go into a big arm tournament with that army. It was so focused on just playing hard target removal that if I played any horde, I would just auto lose. So I'd never take that to a singles event, uh, a, a, a large singles event. You know what I mean? I practiced it at Anna's the week before and just got lucky that I didn't play any hordes, but I wanted to put some reps in with it. You know what I mean? So, but like, if you go into singles, you have to make a list that is really versatile, especially again, with the books that are coming out, you have to have an army that can take on... I mean, just look at the Orcs and the Tau. You have to be ready for elite armies. You have to be ready for Horde armies. And then Knights are still doing fine. So you have to be ready for, you know, things like Knights and stuff like that. Hell, we had two double Gargantuan Squigoths lists in the, in the team tournament. So you got to be ready for just anything, you know what I mean? Who knows what the hell you'll be playing against. Hey, that's it's one of the things I like about teams is that you can have I don't want to say a completely off meta army, but that's kind of what they are in some ways that you can go really skewed and have a lot of fun with it and do well. And like in singles, if you go really skewed, sometimes you just hit your antithesis. You know, yeah. what army terrifies me right now. GSC. Because I think that. Not a lot of people are playing it. And it's not the most powerful army, but man, they have so many wild things they can do. Uh, and I think people forget about them, especially if we get into, if we don't get into a, what I predicted, which is a, a lot of horde coming at you and people start gearing up for elite shit and GSC kind of pops back into the mix. Whew. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I have to give uh, props to uh, Tabletop Live. Uh, yeah. And they, uh, boys from canada john came down and they did a a full video on it i'll post it up 
and they have uh, Brandon literally carrying one of his teammates. So what he keeps telling everyone is, I, I, I carry my team on my back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those guys from Tabletop Live do a nice job. They've been at Du Bois. They've been at Salt City GT. They are really putting together for a newer channel at doing a lot of the 40K live streaming. They're doing a great job. I love their stuff. They put up some really good stuff. They're rocking around. I love it. So, we'll, them... we'll have to get them out to if we, whenever we do whatever we're doing in Dayton this year, we're going to have to get them out there or to Toledo. We're going to have to do it out there. Great. We'll have to get them out there to stream. I love to have those guys rocking and rolling. So it'd be fantastic. Speaking of dropping links, and I should probably actually put it in my own channel that we are we're online right now. That seems like a good. <laughs> And like always, everybody, like and subscribe <laughs> to our channel. <laughs> uh, yeah. Our metrics out and makes the day even better for us. Look at how good we're doing. We even said it before KR told us. I know. How about we, that? Until we get shamed by KR for not <laughs> telling us as usual. <laughs> the, the thing with the meta right now is I'm, I'm I'm pretty psyched. I mean, I'm very psyched up for orcs. And I'm, I'm, I'm always willing to talk orc. I'm always willing to talk to the Tao. I rock it a little bit of it. But there's, I'm wondering how big of an impact it's going to make on these numbers. You know what I mean? Like, we had some wacky number. Like, there was, I, we haven't seen anybody uh, get close to the 60% win rate in quite a bit, man. And the Thousand yeah. Sons and Sisters on that. And it was a lot, a decent amount of games played. It wasn't like, you know, we've seen some bonkers numbers and you're like, what was that? It was two guys playing kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's, you got, 15 and 14 players for Sisters and Thousand Sons that rocked it out over the weekend. Yeah, I mean, if you were to add in, like, I I, I give Stat, or I give uh, Meta Monday a ton, of, a ton of credit because he does a lot of work. Like, if he started ranking in the team's stuff separately, that'd be interesting to see. I would love, I, I clearly don't have the time personally to do that. Um, but it'd be awesome if someone out there had that time to pull all the team's data and did that. It'd be kind of fun. Um, it's kind of like, wild though because you I don't think most of them, most of the U.S. and I and I mean a lot of the U.S. was in teams events this weekend. Yeah, but true yeah, story. I mean, there was a huge chunk in the Florida teams event. You had almost all of our war down there, uh, rocking it out. All of Death or Glory were in Dayton. I mean, like almost all of Death or Glory. I was say were, we brought the team. <laughs> so um, you know, Can Hammer had a whole lot of guys there, including guys from. All over the U. I mean, all over the U.S. went up to Canhammer. I know that Rochester had guys down in Dayton as well. So I mean, it was it, it was it was quite a quite a teams heavy event, especially on the East Coast this week. And I, I'm going to go to one place. Saves on the wall really good. Uh, he goes teams is hard to rank because armies can vary wildly based on what you're using it for 100 percent. Because if you're defending all the time, you're not going to get the biggest win rate or the biggest points. Uh oh. Probability coming with four ninety nine super chat. You know what else helps the channel? The obligatory super chat for Go Blue. <laughs> I, 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 I'm I just did, waiting I did say for people. The stream. It was going to be at least five dollars for a Go. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm ready for people to just talk to me and think that I'm now a Michigan fan. Like, hey, I watch some of your streams, and you say Go Blue a lot. Motherfuckers. <laughs> 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 Not, not only do we say go blue a lot, we get Brad to say glow blue a lot, a lot. <laughs> Just so much. <laughs> so l sure. let's talk about where Krons are right now. I do want to address that because I don't know what to do with, like if I'm GW right now, coming up to the data slate, what do you do with Necrons? Because every other week it seems like they're really dominant and they're, they're doing really well at top tables. You know what I mean? They're at the tops, tops all the time. They're, total win percentage isn't an issue really but do they need to do any anything nope. i mean besides touch maybe a katan oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> oh god <laughs> final super chat for joe this forget go blue let's get a rotan <laughs> i had to throw the southern snake on it too uh oh lyle coming in go moo moo tang clan ain't nothing to fuck with <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, in, in all honesty, I think the best thing they could do with Necrons is raise the Satan's points up just a little bit, like 15 points a model, and then leave them alone. Yeah, I, I just think that Necrons are one of those armies that if they dicked around with too many points, the army could just fall through the floor. 
WTC indeed. Yeah. The, uh, but it, it's... <laughs> we can work with Go... Oh, God. Please don't. Sue so, so just did my worst nightmare. <laughs> so... <laughs> I mean, Brad, that, that just may happen. You never know. <laughs> I, I do. I'm going to give my boy Snigs props over the weekend. Snigs came in. Uh, first off, uh, he can't. I'm going to give you the whole story because it's fantastic. So Snigs comes in and his wife, Gina, comes in. Hey, Gina. And goes, Brad, I'm putting you in charge of Snigs because he feels super bad. You need to make sure he's all right. And I'm like, is there an adult behind me that she's talking to? <laughs> this seems bad. So what we did is we got him wildly drunk. <laughs> so, and at the end of the day, she just comes in to grab him because the whole family was staying at a, a lodge deal or something a little ways off from Dayton. And she's like, what the hell? You were supposed to take care of him. I'm like, there he is. He's perfectly healthy. She's like, he's not standing barely. I'm like, perfectly healthy and leaning. Also, winning games, he has no business winning. Because we were just like, you'll figure it out. You've got Necrons. And it was fantastic. So, you know, sometimes you got to take care of your friends by giving them copious amounts of alcohol and questionable matchups. <laughs> I mean, I think, so looking at, because we're probably a little over two weeks away from the data slate, let's say, you know, or roughly about that amount of time. So we should be getting custodes, uh, the boys, and data slate roughly all in the same time window. Uh, the data slate, I think, for the most part, it's going to be a super light touch. I, I, hope I don't think so. anything's, anything's going to get whacked very hard. Um, I think when orcs come out, they're going to be problematic for a short period of time while people adjust to what they do. Same kind of thing the Necrods had at the beginning. You know yeah, I mean? exactly. And um, I'll go with right, right, real quick on this rally on this. He goes, you can't seem to crack the Canopy Core egg. They clamp properly so well in the combined durability I've struggled with. And the thing is, is like, yes, for a lot of shooting armies and people like that, they can hide and be very nasty. And then one plus who plays a lot of Necrons goes, Canopy Core gets run over by heavy melee. Yes, that's where we get a lot of that scissors, paper, rock right now in the meta. Yep. While we've got a healthy meta, yes, some armies just meet the thing they don't want to meet you know especially on particular boards you know what i mean so it's a big yeah, deal I, that. I don't think i don't think necrons are going to get touched very much i really don't um they clearly aren't going to need to touch custodes uh they'll be perfectly fine <laughs> um is, it... <laughs> the, the memes oh god i didn't get them ready damn it i love the spongebob meme where you have squidward looking through the vent and it just shows uh patrick and spongebob walking and it goes all the orc players so excited about their their codex and it just shows custodes looking through <laughs> just being sad <laughs> and sorry man but man that my my guess is if if the points stay where they are printed in that book yes custodes are in a really bad state I would assume that won't be the case for long if that's what happens, because they would probably drop down to one of the worst performing factions in the game. It, so let's hope that they make some quick edits on points. Well, I mean, if they they make them really cheap, they can go out and do some damage. But man, they just don't seem as fun, man. I read that. I'm reading all the orc stuff that comes out. And I'm just like, this stuff rules, you know, not even just from a power aspect. It's just fun. You know what I mean? Uh, and I don't think they did the same. So. I mean, no, and number one, I got to agree with Zoobs on this. Uh, for some reason, man, <laughs> like 20 points. No, Zoobs, <laughs> if Brad said Custodes are C tier, you know they'll come out broken good. <laughs> All the, the every regular attack just does dev wounds on a hit. Yeah. <laughs> so, new Custodes winning, watch new Custodes, never go mad. Watch new custodes win a game over the weekend. Verified fine. See, there you got it. The people have spoken. And I, I think I think custodes will end up at the end of a few weeks probably being okay. I just don't think out of the gate they're going to be uh, met with the vigor of enthusiasm. Yeah. It, dude, I agree. Orcs have the most flavorful book ever written, and it's awesome. I'm fantastically happy with how they did them. Uh, every detachment seems 
like one of the clans. So it just feels super fun. You know what I mean? And lots of options. Uh, and I'm going to agree with Evan on this. He goes, there seems to be two different writing teams that go back and forth for the releases. And one team is a trash fire and one team cares. And yeah, uh, I wouldn't even just say power levels on armies. So, some armies just seem fun. You know what I mean? And other armies don't. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think the custodes seem like they, it looks like it's going to agree with zooms on that tedious to play. If their point totals are where they are, they just don't have enough on the board to score. Well, they don't have enough strats and stratagems to keep them relevant and interesting for a long haul game. So I think they're going to struggle. Uh, but, uh, hold on. Are they going to struggle so bad that KR did not order the codex? Are you crazy? You have all of the good stuff. And you didn't order them? Oh, that's when things are going downhill. Yeah. He's about to break the stock market on Custodes. I mean, cu Custodes are one of the armies that is tough to balance. And right, we've talked about this on multiple occasions. They're big guys with two up saves and a high toughness value. No, it's it's pay any, tough any, to any of those any of the lead armies that have big shit, um, and sometimes big shit, small you know small elite units. You know what I mean? It, it's just it's difficult to get them uh, to where there even because a lot of times we've had we had the problem with knights on the re, on the release well even back in the day with uh what was the lance formation shit uh you know they were either op or they were terrible you know what i mean and a and lot of those armies me, gw gw is a company that's there to sell models right at the end of the day their job is to sell models custodes is one of their best selling lines Trust me, they want them to be good in the game to where they're playable. They don't want to cut their, you know, money off, you know, quite quickly. So I assume that there'll be some adjustments made to them, and they will. They'll they'll come out of this fine in the end. It's just the start may seem a little rough. Uh, don't get me started. I hold on. I got to get my. I I read the comment from One Plus. <laughs> Having to get the codes in the app. I, we I've already ranted about it. Just again, subscription. Go move on. I'm not, I'm not even gonna go on it. Uh, it. It's a good comment, by the way. But I, I don't want to get myself sidetracked even more than I usually get sidetracked. <laughs> no, uh, I mean I, the the orc stuff looks super fun, super playable. When you've got you know four detachments, every one of them seems enjoyable to play. To start with, seems like they might have tournament play. And the fact that if you're a casual player, you can play a dreads list and go to a tournament and probably do okay and be threatening is going to be fun. It's going to be like, do I want to push the big shiny red button? You know, the, the, the whole run in Stimpy. Yep. And the thing is, I'm super excited for them. I think Tao has at least three armies out of that book. You know what I mean? That are, that are different. I mean, cause I think that, like I said, I, I think I and my look very similar. Um, and then you've got orcs with wildly different lists. You know what I mean? Dread mob uh, with all you could drop tank and dreads all over the place, just pushing the button, spamming that button, blowing yourself up. That is so orky, by the way. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> double hazardous things. And then you've got uh, uh, bully boys uh, just running all the double wog is Bonkersville. Mm -hmm. And also then he doesn't even have any other special rules you're just like double wog but then you realize like things like that are back on the menu for me like i don't know big boys there you know mega knobs uh four up feel no pain when you have when you're in the wog if you get two wogs that seems legit man <laughs> you know a two up save with a four up feel no pain and if you got that new big mech with you you know you're getting a guy back and you're getting a four up involved versus shooting yep. okay uh, that, that does not seem bad. How about that? <laughs> exactly. Uh, you mean the grot tanks list? <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> it is definitely a grot tank list. And I, I, I like the cans, but that's just a me thing because I, Zuber and I have talked about doing this for years. We want to do a hockey themed grot tank, you know, grot uh, killer cans, things with goalies and hockey sticks and, you know, have some fun with it. But. <laughs> you just get to make some wild list. I mean, Speed Freeze looks like it's going to be not, or at least nutty to play and super fun. Uh, the Orc Codex is just super fun. I mean, I'm obviously wildly biased because I just like Orcs, you know what I mean? So, but man, I, I'm I'm very excited to play those armies. Um, so, and I think that the Tile player should be super excited to play their armies because you can just make a lot of different things. It doesn't even matter what you like 
in both of those books, I think they're both successes so far. And obviously, we'll see what the win rates are. We'll see if they've got issues. You know what I mean? If, if the armies are a problem, you know, either being too good, too bad, too whatever. But flavor-wise, it feels like it doesn't matter what models you really like to play in either of the books, you will get to play your models. And that's a big deal for people that love the game. You know what I mean? Do I get to put my favorite shit on the board? Yes. Cool. Great book. <laughs> it's, you know, that is literally the, the final answer on that is, hey, did I get to play the shit that I like? Cool. The, that's what makes a good book. You know, like, I, I agree with... Uh... Ganny NJ, Mike, uh, beast. Well, that's Mike. That's right. Yeah, um, that's going to be fun to throw that beast list into the Iron Storm Marines. <laughs> like that's just that's going to be a good time. You're going to want to have a four deploy if you're playing the Big Hunt because nine inch in <laughs> scout move from yeah. a giant unit of boys that the Beast Boss and Squigasaur now joins and leads is going to be a big thing. You're going to be like, I should put something in front of that because <laughs> that's. That seems like something I don't want scouting nine inches up on me. <laughs> Hello, guys. I'm here to sell pain. <laughs> uh, it, it, Raleigh, the, as resident Rick Shooty, man, the towel codex excites me. So much janky cool things. 100%, man. It's just... Yeah. And, and that's the thing is, is that it's not just the, the overall mega power in list that is the best thing. Again, you want to be able to play your shit, but you want to play your shit in a fun way. You know what I mean? Like, I think that they just hit it out of the park with those two. I'm actually really surprised that the Custodes is coming out as flat as it is because they had back-to-back -back books, and they, they this is all pre-planned forever ago. You know what I mean? And you think that they were working on these things at about the same time. So you they're hitting it out of the park with Tau. They're hitting it out of the park with Orcs. And then they're just, you know... They're not even striking out. It feels like they just got DQ'd. You punched the ump. <laughs> like what happened there? You know, it's just. So is it? Do you really think that there's just a different team every once in a while working on something, and they go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you guys go work on that." And when they bring it to the playtesters, the playtesters go, "It looks like a book," and they go, "Great, we got it done." <laughs> and they walk away, and they're like, "No, so, no because you could." Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, Brian, I think that a lot of people. God damn it, Hunter. Hey, Brad, go blue. <laughs> so thank you for the super chat. Uh, but the thing with what it is, is that you, I, I just think that you have, because you got to remember that these writers have to come up with new stories, new everything, new mechanics, you know what I mean? And it feels like certain things you have people with armies that they love and certain ones that they just deal with, you know what I mean? Um, Maybe they have more of that, or maybe they just miss the mark. Period. You know what I mean? You're just gonna have some. You're not. Everything's not gonna be crush. You know what I mean? For sure. I mean, it, 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 there's always been misses for every edition that I've played 40k, which is all of them um, on codexes. There's always been a book that's just been like, oh, that one didn't hit anything. It missed on every every side of the thing. But at least now with the with the changes that GW's made over the last few years where they actually address things and bring stuff up and put stuff down. I mean, I can remember there was a point where in, I want to say sixth edition, maybe, or sorry, fifth edition, we were still playing with like a third edition Grey Knights book. And oh, we were all just kind of like, oh. Sorry, that's a full blue reference, the up reference. <laughs> Evan coming in with the Angel Hernandez, Custodes and Admac. I mean, <laughs> By the way, for reference, it's a guy that was missing strike calls by seven to eight inches on the strike zone. So, oh, that's dirty. That's dirty. <laughs> Ooh. No, it just I, at least now they compared to what we used to have. And I'm going back, you know, ten years ago. GW didn't balance anything. No, right? It was like, here's your FAQ. Uh, can you fix the points on this? No. But we, we don't want to use anything out of this book. That's nice. We sold it to you. Thanks. Have a nice day. Or now they care and put time and effort into watching the meta, addressing things with balance updates. So I, I'm hopeful that they will address the, the books that are underperforming or the ones we anticipate are going to I give it. If they've been doing a good I have to give GW props and stuff. We, we throw them under the bus all the time. But like Dark Eldar was in a trash fire position 
right when the data slam. I mean, they they didn't make him the all powerful. They made him fully playable though. You know what I mean? Uh, before that, they did Death Guard and they did Votan. You know what I mean? It and they've brought some of these new books. It just it feels bad when, like I said, they hit some of these out of the park with fluff and rules, the power and the you know what I mean, and the lore going really well. I mean, come on, tell me a time when you could play more to lore in two codexes than orcs and tau right now yeah you know i mean yeah. and that's what that that's i guess why the custodes book is probably isn't even the worst book around you're just putting it next to two great books yeah I, the the feeling of those two books is definitely you yeah. know I, I can say that like because i talk to player bases every day i mean my job is to talk warhammer to people and i talk with players every day and Tile players, super excited about their book. Orc players, super excited about their book. Custom players are kind of like, I'm going to see what I can pull out because yeah. they're not super keen on what's coming. So I, I'm hopeful that GW makes just the minor tweaks that it probably does. Yeah. And the thing is, is we, have a, we have so much of a better meta than we have. I mean, this is coming from, you know, anybody that's played for a long time knows that we've had some, some goddamn dark times. You know, oh. you're like, hey, are you bringing this army? Well, you're not winning this weekend. So, you know, just there, there's been some times. And I know that 10th edition started out as a hot turd floating down the river. Because uh, the, but since the first data sheet, we've, it's been really starting to pick up for me. And I, yeah. I dig this edition. And I think I look, is everything perfect? Nope, never going to be. No. But, they've i give gw the props they are doing and yes i'm gonna say it again the uppy downy of fixing things they they bring the the top stuff down they try to bring the bottom stuff up it's not a bad thing it's a good thing it's great that they're addressing these things i mean custard data yeah, one plus goes custard data sheets are still pretty good i won't be surprised if they stay on the decent in the go to like zone yeah uh the, the thing is is that when i'm looking at a codex and this is because i you know, I'm in 40k a lot and I've been playing for forever. I don't just look at the power level. I look for the fun level because I don't want to practice something that sucks. You know, I don't want to spend a lot of time with something that doesn't bring me joy. So I look for that in any list that I'm taking uh, that I plan on playing for a while. You know what I mean? I want to have it exciting. I want it to be fun. You know, I've... I mean, shit, tons of tournaments I went to where I could have taken this, which was better, but this was good and fun. So it, the the combination of numbers was just better. It just is. For I mean, especially for me, you're, you're never going to put time into an army that you just don't like playing. You know, you're not going to practice yeah. enough. You're not going to do anything. Yeah, I agree with what, what Zub says on this one. And it doesn't seem like there's huge power creep with the codexes, and that's happy. I agree with that. I actually, so far, I haven't seen one of the codexes come out where we've gone, oh, that's so bonkers. It's completely busted. Everything's going to have to deal with it. It's all been like, yeah, it's good. It's solid. It, are you going to have to adjust a little bit? Yeah. Are you going to have to change everything in your army? Absolutely not. I love this. <laughs> did we talk about Imperial Knights and be dragging their win rate out of the trash can? Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> It's it, it. The thing is, is everybody listening? I really can't stress enough. Play the shit that you like. Play the best version of the shit you like. Obviously, if you want to do well in a tournament, you can't just bring YOLO whatever and expect to win everything. But bring the shit that brings you. Bring the faction. Bring the type of list that makes you joy. Just make it the best part. You know, what I mean? make it the best version of that list that you can bring. You know what I mean? Uh, and you'll be happy. You'll be way happier at tournaments. You know what I mean? Uh, again, at every tournament you go to, one person's probably going to be, I mean, a couple of them be on a few, you know what I mean? But, like, there's very few people that are going through without a loss. I would rather take a loss and play, you know, five to nine games with something that I love to play than, you know, take a loss with something that I makes my eyes bleed to play. <laughs> so, yes. Cool. So much. Yeah, that the uh, Imperial, and, and for those who missed a little earlier in the stream, the Imperial Knights list that won Bedlam at the Berg was running uh, Canis Pimp Hand and all of his boys. Freedom! <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was a really nice list. It had a lot of scoring. It had the uh, the the Assassin to, you know, go score some points for you. It, it was a nice list, and congratulations on that one again. 
I mean, it's a big deal on that. So it, with that, you get to, again, you got to be the best version of your stuff. You know what I mean? Some people go, oh, I'm, and I lose with this. But, like, you have to figure out what the best version is. And you got to chalk it off. I go with, you know, the three things that I'm looking for in a list. Do I have enough blocking? Do I have enough scoring? Do I have enough damage? You know what I mean? And make that. But make it in the, the list that you want. It's what we always do when we do the fix my list. Is I try to make sure that we're when we're talking about fixing it, we don't go, we don't leave what the theme of the list is in the first place. And you shouldn't leave the theme of the list in the first place. Don't let somebody tell you to play something you don't want to play. We're playing with toys. You know what I mean? Play the best toys you can, you know, but but still, you know, if you're not having a good time, what the hell are you doing? You know what I mean? It made any sense. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's cool. Canis is a chat. <laughs> yeah, he, he, the dude, I mean, what is it flat nine damage <laughs> it's like, that's so it's such a ridiculous number i do want to see a story i told lyle this i i'm gonna i'm gonna figure out a, he, a list for lyle he said if you can make me a competitive list with two storm surges and put all the crude out there i will play it in a second because i just want to see anybody shoot something and go okay take 12 flat damage you're like you just blew the head off a little knight with one shot <laughs> Also, if you guys haven't seen, oh man, I don't know if it's a conversion or it's just the from the 3D print that they put on it, but the the storm surge holding the gun as opposed to just standing there at, oh, yeah, at salute so uh, looks a billion times better than the thank you uh, than the than the actual uh, the model itself. I mean, holy god, that the guy looks so boss mode. So he just ripped all his storm surges apart, basically, and then showed me those new ones uh, with the conversions. And I'm like, you did the right thing, sir, because that looks a million times better. Oh, it's so much better. There, uh, Riley, there is a it's on Etsy. There's a guy who actually has the arms that pose to hold yes. the gun. It is absolutely a fantastic conversion kit. To can because all you're doing is taking like basically two arms and uh, putting them on them. Uh, really sweet. Uh, I've seen it a few times in person and I've seen it a few many times online painted up. Absolutely cool looking thing. It does look like a giant broadside at that point. It just it, it looks so much more dynamic and it, it just I don't know the stormtroopers looks dumb without it. To be honest with you, it just it, it, those look yeah. cool. It, and the thing is, is rule of cool always applies. So you know bring to me your conversions your your, your huddled masses uh i just i love as somebody that doesn't see colors as well i love seeing conversions i dig them so much so i i'm a big fan of counts as armies and stuff like that a lot of people are not i know kr doesn't like conversions for sure hey brad on the weekend your team one date correct yep so from your experience of being that team's event, what did you find to be successful in your team and what was unsuccessful? It was wildly different because we had a lot of different tables. So we, some of the things we usually try to pull out were more, more difficult. Um, we had a good team concept. I have to give props to Anna. Anna came with us. Tom, Tom's family uh, got COVID and Tom couldn't go. And Anna literally last, I'm talking Thursday last minute, grabbed Tom's army uh, and played it. So, you know, zero reps. <laughs> hey, can you show up for a tournament? When? Uh, you need to leave right now for our team. So much, much props. We would we would have been playing with uh, four people, and it's going to be tough to win a five-man tournament with uh, four peeps. But one of the biggest things is, I always say in teams, is you have to have lists you're looking to stay away from the bad shit, not getting you the best matchups. I think people make mistakes on that all the time. They take a couple good matches, but then you end up with, you know, a couple twenties and a couple zeros. And that's just too volatile. I'd rather give everybody an okay match. You need to have armies. We, we all of us had armies that can just score points. I think that's the biggest thing you can go with some skews. And I think the skews work better in eight hands. But the, one of the biggest things that just worked is make sure that everybody can just score kind of no matter what happens. And we took five armies that could do that. 
and just put up some points, put up some points, put up some points, you know? And the thing is, is that it's such a big deal in teams because you can get your head kicked in and just rolled. As long as you can chip away at points, that's all that matters. You know what I mean? It's just a couple points from a player here, a couple points here. Uh, a lot of times it's all you need to get that win. It's not just about just big, big numbers. You know what I mean? It's just nickel and diming. And you have to design your list accordingly. I don't even care what faction they are. You just need to have things that score. Because the problem is, is sometimes you bring lists that are just big hitters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lock coming to the $2 Super Chat. Team Huddle, while yelling at me to make sure I got in there. Because you get to tell everybody what their game plan is. Hey, yep. you're playing against this. You're not even supposed to win. You're supposed to get X amount of points. You know what I mean? Grind out. Don't literally do not overextend. You're supposed to smash this army. You have to, you know, go out, you know, look for those opportunities for big points. But it's such a difference in this because a lot of times you're going into games and going, I'm not never trying to win this game. You know, so it's it's so wildly different. But you have to plan for that. You have to plan your list for that. Your list have to be able to score because a lot of times if you bring these super I'm doing a million damage lists. And you play someone that just takes a heavy table and just sits there and goes, okay, go, your turn. Yeah, like, hey, what? You know, well, the other person doesn't score points and they also end up making mistakes. So you have to give yourself the, yeah, hold on, give yourself an opportunity to have an opportunity. There you go. Right, write that on my cat poster. <laughs> All right. So, Brad, what, what event do you have coming up next? I don't know. I think I said I was I was going to like seven different events and I have like 11 cents and half of them require a plane ticket. So I'm not 100% sure where I'm going. I know for sure I'll be at ATC. I'll be at yours. I'll be at, um, what else am I going to? I think I'm going to Anna's in summer too. Uh, the bigger thing is 40keylorecast.com. <laughs> Let me promote my stuff. Mayhem? Yeah, that might be. I... I have to look. I, I I basically need an adult to tell me where I'm supposed to go is really what I need to do. So that, that's what I'm going at. <laughs> what what would you like to promote, my fine sir? So my I would always like to promote the Salt City GT at thesaltcitygt.com, August 9th, 10th, and 11th in Syracuse, New York. Tons of different events. Come check it out. Absolute ton of fun. Saturday night may be the best enjoyable post-40K time you will have in your life. Take my word on this one. Also want to give a shout out to Battle for Salvation, which is happening in two weekends in West Nyack, New York. They're a big eight man team event that I will be the head judge at. We are going to be there. Zuber will be there helping me out judge and we are going to have a grand time. Everyone stay milky. 